Good evening, Dr. Phil here. Today we'll be discussing on the saphenous nerve block. Indications for the saphenous nerve block includes anesthesia for surgery on the foot and lower leg in combination with popliteal sciatic nerve block and for saphenous vein stripping or harvesting. Analgesia for medial aspect of the leg and foot for knee surgery in combination with multimodal analgesia. Saphenous nerve block provides analgesia comparable to that of a formal femoral nerve block but is relatively motor sparing and so does not delay immediate post-operative rehabilitation. Complications of saphenous nerve block includes bleeding and bruising, paresthesia and nerve damage, LA toxicity, intravascular injection, and falls from partial motor block of the vestus medialis. Injection of a large volume of LA into the subsartorial space can result in a partial motor block of the vestus medialis due to the block of the femoral nerve branch to this muscle, which is often contained in the ductal canal. To reduce the risk of motor block of vestus medialis, a saphenous nerve block should be performed at the most distal level as practically possible, where the femoral artery still lies immediately deep to the sartorius muscle. Patients who underwent a proximal saphenous block should be advised against ambulating without support. Anatomy of the saphenous nerve The saphenous nerve branches out from the posterior division, deep part of the femoral nerve, and it is the largest cutaneous branch of the femoral nerve. It lies in the adductor canal. The adductor canal is an intermuscular passageway approximately 15 cm long in adults, deep to the sartorius muscle, where the major neurovascular bundle of the thigh courses through the middle third of the thigh. Boundaries of the adductor canal Superior boundary is the apex of the femoral triangle. Inferior boundary is the adductor hiatus in the tendon of the adductor magnus. Anterior and lateral boundary is the vastus medialis. Posterior boundary is the adductor longus and adductor magnus. Medial boundary is the sartorius. Contents of the adductor canal includes the saphenous nerve, femoral artery, femoral vein, and nerve to vastus medialis. Course of the saphenous nerve. In the thigh, it descends with the femoral artery into the adductor canal. Anteriorly, it is covered by the sartorius muscle. Relation with the femoral artery. Initially, it lies lateral to the artery. Then the saphenous nerve crosses it anteriorly to lie medial to the femoral artery at the distal end of the adductor canal. At the distal end of the adductor canal, it separates from the artery and pierces the overlying fascia of the adductor canal. It is accompanied by the saphenous branch of the descending genicular artery at this level. It then passes vertically down beneath the sartorius on the medial aspect of the knee. It exits between the tendons of the sartorius and gracilis to reach the subcutaneous tissues, branch to the subsartorial plexus. This branch is given off by the saphenous nerve in the mid-thigh region as it leaves the adductor canal as its infrapatella branch. This branch pierces the sartorius and fascia lata to supply the prepatella skin. It also connects with the other femoral cutaneous branches and forms the patella plexus. Leg and foot. The saphenous nerve courses with the long saphenous vein to reach the ankle along the posterior border of the tibia and divides into two branches. One branch supplies the skin over the medial border of the tibia. Another branch courses anterior to the medial malleolus and supplies the skin on the medial side of the foot. The saphenous nerve connects with the superficial peroneal nerve and thus its cutaneous distribution is highly variable. The saphenous nerve extends distally to supply the medial side of the foot up to the first metatarsal phalangeal joint. This diagram shows the expected distribution of analgesia after a saphenous nerve block at the level of the mid-thigh. Landmark Technique Introduction as the saphenous nerve is a pure sensory nerve, blockade of this nerve has been historically performed by subcutaneous infiltration, either at the level of the tibial condyle or at the level of the medial malleolus. Alternative techniques that may improve the success rate of saphenous nerve blockade includes the transsartorial approach with a loss of resistance, paravenous approach, high peripheral nerve stimulation technique, and low peripheral nerve stimulation technique. With peripheral nerve stimulation, the desired response is either a surrogate motor response from a motor nerve such as the nerve to vastus medialis. 
This portal nerve originates from the same component of the femoral nerve and is in close proximity to the saphenous nerve. Paresthesia in the distribution of the saphenous nerve may also be sought. Success rates of different approaches to saphenous nerve block. Transsartorial approach 100%, perifemoral PNS technique 70%. This technique has a high incidence of hip flexor and leg extensor weakness up to 60%. Below knee field block 70% success rate, medial malleoli blocks 60% success rate, block at the medial femoral condyle 25-40% to success rate. The most reliable technique to block the saphenous nerve is still a femoral nerve block. Motor weakness from saphenous nerve block. If motor weakness is acceptable for the case, a more proximal technique may be used. If it is undesirable, perform the block as distally as possible. Due to the common innervation of the medial aspect of the foot by the medial dorsal cutaneous branch of the peroneal nerve and the saphenous nerve, it is difficult to achieve complete anesthesia of the medial aspect of the foot with saphenous nerve block alone. Important landmarks includes the inguinal ligament, femoral artery, sartorius, patella, tibial condyle and tibial tuberosity, long saphenous vein, and medial malleolus. Techniques Transsartorial technique Landmarks includes the sartorius and patella. Patient is positioned supine with knee extended and leg slightly raised. The needle insertion point Identify the belly of the sartorius muscle on the medial side of the knee. One to two finger breaths above the patella. Draw a perpendicular line to cross the sartorius muscle. The intersection point between the sartorius and this line is the needle insertion point. General measures. Prepare monitoring, equipment, emergency drugs and IV access. Use standard aseptic measures and anesthetize the skin with 1% lidocaine. Needle insertion. Insert a needle in a slightly cordial and dorsal direction at the above-mentioned needle insertion point. The needle should pass through the belly of the sartorius. As the needle passes into the subsartorial space, a loss of resistance will be elicited. After careful aspiration, inject 10 ml of LA, such as 0.25% levobupivacaine. Perifemoral approach. Important landmarks include the inguinal ligament and the femoral artery. General measures as mentioned. Needle insertion. Insert a 50mm needle, 1cm lateral to the femoral arterial pulse, at a point 4 to 6cm distal to the inguinal ligament. The desired motor response on peripheral nerve stimulation of the medial part of the femoral nerve includes contraction of the vastus medialis, which is ideal, or rectus femoris, resulting in the patella twitch. LA injection. 10 ml of LA is injected after careful aspiration. Infiltration at the tibial condyle. Palpate for the medial tibial condyle. General measures as mentioned. Needle insertion. Insert a needle in an anterior to posterior direction at the level of the tibial tuberosity. Infiltrate 5 to 10 ml of LA subcutaneously, medially over the medial tibial condyle to the dorsal medial aspect of the calf. A tie tonique may help to identify the long saphenous vein, and additional paravenous LA infiltration may be used. Infiltration at the medial malleolus. Palpate for the medial malleolus. General measures as mentioned. Needle insertion. Insert a needle 1 to 2 finger breaths above the medial malleolus. Infiltrate 5 ml of LA subcutaneously from the posterior border of the medial malleolus to the anterior border of the tibia. Ultrasound technique. The saphenous nerve is difficult to visualize on ultrasonography because it is small, 3 to 6 mm and located deep at its most consistent site, subsartorially. Compared with landmark or PNS techniques, ultrasound-guided saphenous nerve block has improved success rates of saphenous blocks compared with few blocks below the knee and blind transsartorial approaches. Ultrasound settings. Use a high-frequency linear probe set at the depth of 2-4 to cm with a transverse or axial orientation. Needle length of choice is 50-80 to mm the patient is positioned supine with the hip abducted and externally rotated and knee slightly flexed. The ultrasound probe is placed transversely on the medial aspect of the thigh, two finger breaths above the patella. Identify the sartorius.
This muscle has a distinct flattened triangular appearance. If followed cephalat, it will cross the anterior thigh to its origin at the ASIS. The femoral artery and vein is seen coursing beneath the sartorius in the subsartorial canal as the probe scans cephalat along the body of the sartorius. The saphenous nerve, this nerve enters the subsartorial canal lateral to the common femoral artery along with the nerve of the vastus medialis. It then crosses the femoral artery superiorly to lie superior medial to the artery in the lower part of the canal. The saphenous nerve may appear as a hyperechoic structure lying lateral to the femoral artery high in the subsartorial canal, however it is often not clearly seen. Scanning caudally, the femoral artery starts to pass posteriorly into the adductor canal and branches off the descending genicular artery. The saphenous nerve leaves the subsartorial canal at this level, accompanied by the saphenous branch of this artery. It then lies between the sartorius and gracilis and causes into the subcutaneous tissues of the medial thigh. A small infrapatellar hyperechoic branch may be identified beneath the sartorius before the saphenous nerve becomes superficial. Technique General measures involves preparation for monitoring, emergency drugs, IV access and equipment. Use standard aseptic measures and anesthetize the skin with 1% lidocaine at the needle insertion point. In-plane approach Identify the sartorius, femoral artery and femoral vein. Direct the needle to pass between the sartorius and vastus medialis. Blockade of the saphenous nerve can be performed at any level within the subsartorial canal if the nerve can be seen clearly. The perisaphenous branch of the descending geniculate artery can be identified with color Doppler in order to avoid puncturing it. LA injection. After negative aspiration for blood, inject 5 mL of LA around the saphenous nerve if the nerve is clearly seen. If the saphenous nerve is not clearly seen, inject 10 mL of LA in the tissue plane deep to the sartorius and superficial to the femoral artery. These are my references. Thank you.